tropical spider. The human body is a fascinating place, and sometimes things end up inside of us that don't quite belong. Take the story of Dylan Thomas, a young guy in his 20s who had to have a tropical spider surgically removed from his body during a vacation to Bali. And to answer your first question, no he did not get any superpowers. What he got instead was a very cool story to tell for the rest of his life. But how did Dylan get a tropical spider inside of him? Well, it all happened when Thomas visited the doctor after waking up with a huge red scar-like mark going from his belly button up to his chest. The doctor told him that it was just an insect bite and to put some cream on it, but a few days later the scar began to blister. Thomas then visited a dermatologist who immediately realized that something horrifying was going on. Some tests were done and it turned out there was a tropical spider living inside of him for at least three days. Luckily, the spider was dead when it was removed, and as of the time the story was published, experts were still waiting for tests to see exactly what species of spider it was. It was also unclear how exactly the spider managed to get inside of him, and some people online even claim that Dylan was just a big fat liar and made up the whole story. According to a report from the Bunbury Mail, Dylan was recently trying to raise money for a Spider-Man tattoo as commemoration for the experience. Have you ever been bitten by a spider? What happened? Did you have to go to the hospital? Tell me in the comments below. Then remember, if you haven't subscribed already, to go ahead and subscribe to Taltanic for more cool videos just like this one. Pea Plant in the Lung A man in Massachusetts was rushed to the hospital when his lung collapsed. He had been battling emphysema for several months and his condition deteriorated suddenly. After his visit to the hospital, the Massachusetts man was prepared for a cancer diagnosis. This is because x-rays taken after his lung collapsed revealed a growth inside of his lung, but what looked like cancer turned out to be a pea plant growing inside of his lung. This was not the prognosis that anyone saw coming. Doctors believe that the patient at some point swallowed a pea, but it went down the wrong tube. The pea then decided that it would just go ahead and grow inside of the guy's lung. By the time the plant was removed, it was about half an inch, one centimeter in size. The good news here, of course, is that the guy did not have cancer, but unfortunately, he still had emphysema. As for the pea plant, it turns out that peas can grow basically anywhere. Who would have thought that the inside of a human lung would be the perfect greenhouse? 78 Forks and Spoons We've all heard of people with strange eating habits. Some people have a love for eating soap, some people enjoy eating foreign foods, and then there's the woman who was obsessed with eating cutlery. While not many of us probably see the allure in chomping down on spoons and forks, this woman ate them like popcorn. According to Fox News, she actually had to go under the knife, no pun intended, to remove 78 forks and spoons that were stuck inside of her stomach. The doctor said that every time Margaret Dahlman, who was from Rotterdam in Holland, sat down to eat a meal, she instead ignored the food and ate the silverware. The woman was 52 years old when she eventually had to get hospitalized because of severe pain in her stomach. A quick x-ray revealed the dozens of implements inside of her, and surgery successfully removed them. This is obviously the strangest and possibly most dangerous compulsion a person can have. According to Margaret herself, she felt an urge to eat the silverware and could not help herself. Luckily, she was smart enough not to swallow any knives, and so nothing ended up piercing her stomach wall and causing major damage. She eventually was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And according to the report from Fox News, Margaret has made a complete recovery from the surgery and is responding well to her therapist. She is also not eating forks and spoons anymore, and hopefully she does not start again anytime soon. Wedding Ring This next story fits into a few different categories. Yes, it's a bizarre thing found in a person's body, but it's also one of the stupidest crimes ever committed. It all happened in 2011 when a man tried to make off with a diamond wedding ring that he had stolen from a couple's home. The man from Chicago actually swallowed the wedding ring before it could be retrieved by its owner. According to ABC News, the man's name is Wilfred Gonzalez, and he was doing a remodeling project for a couple when he asked if he could use the bathroom of their home. But after his trip to the bathroom, the woman of the house realized that her diamond ring was missing. Her husband confronted the man, the two got into a fight, and the suspect took the ring from his shoe and stuffed it into his mouth. This was obviously completely ridiculous, and when police arrived, Gonzalez confessed to stealing the ring. He ended up having to do an x-ray, he was taken to the local hospital, and the expensive diamond ring was spotted inside of his stomach. The end of the story is kinda hilarious, as Gonzalez was taken to jail and stuffed in a room with a bedpan. The authorities gave him a laxative and waited for him to poop out the ring, which happened at around 4am. The ring was then returned to the couple, and hopefully they gave it a good washing before it was put back on the woman's finger. As for the thief, he appeared in court and had a bail set for $10,000. 
350 coins. The woman who ate 78 pieces of cutlery was quite obviously insane, but meet the man who was admitted to a hospital in France after coming down with some stomach pains because he ate 350 coins, a few different necklaces, and even some needles. This guy also had a history of psychiatric illness. He was 62 years old when admitted to the hospital, complete with a swollen stomach. He could not eat, and he couldn't go to the toilet. Doctors at the hospital were absolutely floored when they discovered a mass the size of a bowling ball inside his stomach. Apparently, the family of the man had warned doctors previously of his habit for swallowing coins, and he had even had some removed from his stomach in previous hospital visits. Fortunately, the guy was admitted to surgery five days after arriving at the hospital, and surgeons were able to take the coins out of his stomach. They found an equivalent of 4,050 francs inside his belly. Doctors believe that he had been swallowing coins for at least 10 years. The objects became so heavy that they pushed the man's stomach all the way down to between his hips. It was basically like eating weights, and they really messed up his body. So far as doctors could surmise, the man just really liked eating coins. He even had a habit of stealing coins from other people and eating them. Surgical Scissors Get ready for a horror story. Surgery is not an easy thing to undergo. There are so many things to worry about, like the surgery going wrong, the anesthesia not being applied properly, and now apparently we all need to be worried that doctors will accidentally leave their surgical instruments inside of us. That's because a man in Vietnam recently needed to have a pair of scissors removed from his stomach 18 years after a surgeon accidentally left them inside during an operation. This is definitely the most negligent thing that a surgeon has probably ever done and probably ever could do. What's even more fascinating is that the man probably wouldn't have known about the scissors. He only went to the hospital because of a road accident. The doctors took an ultrasound test and were shocked to find the scissors lodged in one side of the man's abdomen. They were not ordinary scissors either, but a pair of surgical forceps. According to the report from Global News, the hospital that found the forceps was the same hospital where this guy had had his surgery in 1998. Doctors removed the instrument from his body in yet another surgery, and they acknowledged the incident on state television, but denied any wrongdoing on their part, claiming that medical records from 18 years ago were no longer available. Maggot Myosis Myosis is one of the most horrendous medical terms known to man. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC for short, myosis is an infection of fly larvae. It normally happens in a tropical or subtropical area when a person accidentally ingests larvae from a fly, either through an open wound or sore, through the nose, or through the ears. This can also occur when a person is bitten by a mosquito or other type of fly that then embeds their larva inside the wound. It's an absolutely horrendous condition that essentially ends up with maggots being hatched inside of a human body. It can happen inside of a wound, and it can essentially make the area of your body rot while the maggots eat you from the inside out. Anyone who has gone traveling to a tropical area has probably heard of this awful condition. And guess what? It really does happen. In Hong Kong, health officials just recently reported two human cases, one in January and another in February. The first case involved a 99-year-old elderly resident who was admitted to a public hospital after her gums swelled and started bleeding. A surgical examination found an oral ulcer and a deep cavity filled with maggots. Basically, the woman had somehow ended up with maggots being hatched inside of an ulcer in her mouth. Now that's disgusting. Bone, teeth, hair. Let's keep it going with another disgusting story. A teenager in Indiana was rushed to the hospital because of a bizarre mass protruding from her abdomen. But you'll never believe what it was. After some investigation, the doctors found an enormous hunk of bone, teeth, and hair inside her abdomen. According to the doctors, the large mass was actually her twin. This is a very rare condition known as fetus in fetu. For the previous five years, the girl explained to doctors that she had been developing a lump in her abdomen and it had been increasing in size. She sometimes felt abdominal pain and often felt full even when she hadn't eaten a lot of food. Apparently, she had been part of two fetuses while in the womb, but she had absorbed the other fetus and was born perfectly healthy. But rather than the other fetus perishing, it continued to grow inside of her body. This is one of only seven cases where this has happened to a person over the age of 15. It's such a bizarre medical issue that scientists don't even know what causes it to happen. Luckily, the teenager received a surgery and was okay after the doctors removed what was essentially a hairball of teeth and bone the size of a baby. The teen is expected to make a full recovery. A house key. 
sometimes things happen when we drink too much and we can't remember them. Well, Chris Foster had no memory of swallowing his door key after a night of drinking with his friends. The young man was only 18 years old when this happened. After spending the night on a friend's couch, he could not find his key. Then he started feeling unusually unwell. Chris ended up having to go to the hospital because of horrible pain in his throat and a strange sensation in his stomach. An x-ray then revealed his door key sitting peacefully in his stomach. Luckily, there was no surgery required. Doctors sent the boy home, told him to let nature do its thing, and 31 hours later, Chris got his key back. Of course, he did have to thoroughly rinse the key afterwards, and he probably won't make the silly decision of swallowing his key ever again wouldn't want to put it in his mouth after that. Let this be a lesson to all the party goers out there. Don't swallow your keys. Knife in the head. When most people get stabbed in the head, they die. However, a man from Harlem ended up being extremely lucky after he escaped a stabbing with just a few minor injuries and a kitchen knife stuck in his scalp. A video was uploaded online that showed the gory aftermath of the attack. The man can be seen in the video talking calmly to the mortified onlookers while a kitchen knife stuck out from the top of his head. It looked like he couldn't even feel it. According to eyewitnesses, the man didn't even want to get into the ambulance and refused to tell anyone his name. But according to the police, the kitchen knife didn't actually penetrate the guy's skull, and that ultimately saved his life. It instead got wedged inside the flesh of his head. He was eventually taken to Harlem Hospital and was later listed in stable condition. The stabbing had apparently been from a domestic squabble in which the female companion of the man stabbed him directly in the head with a knife. It's unclear exactly what happened to the woman, but it's safe to say the pair probably will not be getting back together. Fossilized Sports Car The first amazing abandoned vehicle that was recently discovered is a very rare 1932 sports car that seriously surprised archaeologists while excavating a former artillery post. This happened in the United Kingdom. An archaeological crew had been needed to excavate the post before it was transformed into a new modern housing facility for the military. And it's no wonder they were so surprised by the discovery. A fossilized sports car is definitely not something that archaeologists are used to finding at a dig site. The car would have been an absolutely beautiful 1932 MG J2 midget almost 90 years ago. It was one of only 2,083 models ever made in a span of two years. According to the archaeologists who discovered this random car abandoned and in the dirt, they believed it was used all the way until the 1960s, but was then taken apart to be repaired. For an unknown reason, the car was abandoned before repairs could be made. Then for decades, it sat in the dirt at the old artillery post until the archaeologists stumbled upon it totally by accident. This is one of the very first sports cars in history, and it's amazing to think what would have happened if it had stayed in the dirt for another 500 years. What would future archaeologists have made of such a discovery? Oldsmobile Limousine the classic Oldsmobile is pretty much a limousine without being modified into one. And yet, somebody did it anyway. The company American Quality Coach was founded in roughly 1968 when two men decided to manufacture coaches based on the original Oldsmobile Tornado from General Motors. These two fellows had an entire line of coaches they wished to build, including ambulances, hearses, and limousines, all built to mimic the Oldsmobile while being larger and more impressive. Their first product that they actually created was the airport limousine, properly titled the the AQC Jetway 707. The vehicle was 28 feet long, 8.5 meters, and it had 8 doors, it seated 15 people, and it had twin rear axles. The vehicle also had skylights and an enclosed cargo area. Unfortunately, these two businessmen never got to go ahead with any of their other proposed vehicles. Their capital got tied up in producing the first line of airport limousines, which by the way, absolutely nobody wanted to buy. Then in 1970, just two years after they started, the fellows went bankrupt. To this day, nobody knows how many of the AQC Jetway 707s were built. There have been estimates of between 52 and 150. One of the most recent ones discovered was back in 2015 when someone spotted a Jetway 707 sitting in a random driveway, seemingly abandoned in Nebraska. It was in rough shape and clearly had not been driven. It also might be one of the only ones left in the country. What's the strangest car you've ever ridden in? An old military Humvee? A super teched out limousine? A monster truck even? Tell me about your wildest car experiences in the comments section down below. Then remember to subscribe if you have not already, and keep your browser pointed to Taltanic for more amazing videos. Target 550 Streamliner 
The Target 550 Streamliner is most certainly a unique and strange vehicle. Its only purpose in life is to break the record for the fastest wheel drive, piston-powered land vehicle of all time. It was designed with two supercharged Dodge engines capable of generating up to 5,000 horsepower. The current record is 470 miles per hour, but the Target 550 is determined to beat it by 80 miles per hour. It has not happened yet, but it just might. The vehicle has been in production for quite some time. The photos you've seen of it sitting in the middle of the salt flats completely gray like the shell of a spaceship were from several years ago before it got a proper paint job. While this vehicle has not technically been abandoned in any sense of the word, the scheduled drive to beat the record has certainly been postponed indefinitely. The car is still a fascinating piece of machinery, and we're still waiting to see if it really can break the speed record and hit the targeted 550 miles per hour, which obviously is where the vehicle gets its name from. Right now, it's likely sitting in a garage somewhere collecting dust waiting for the big day. Abandoned Cars and Train Tunnel Speaking of cars that go fast, check out this collection of abandoned cars stuck inside of a collapsed train tunnel. According to TheDrive.com, the tunnel was an aged piece of infrastructure in England that had been converted into a subterranean vehicle repair shop after the train stopped running. The tunnel was then abandoned in 2012 when a ceiling collapse threatened to plunge the entire tunnel into darkness. Unfortunately, the tunnel suddenly became so dangerous that everything needed to be left behind. This included the cars from the current customers, working projects, and the tools and equipment. Basically, Basically, everything inside the tunnel had to be left while the workers escaped with their lives. The tunnel was then sealed. It wasn't until recently that the drive managed to get a hold of some of the photos of the abandoned vehicles within. The story is fascinating enough, but there are actually some pretty cool vehicles stuck inside the tunnel that will never see the light of day again. There is a Land Rover Series 2, a 1979 Lotus Elite, and even a 1992 Mitsubishi Pajero. Most of these cars have been underground for over 30 years, so they're in understandably horrible condition. But who knows, maybe this tunnel will act like a time capsule and in 500 years, someone will open it up and find a treasure trove of classic cars still able to be fixed and driven. Soviet Missile Launcher while out for a weekend adventure, a man in Russia named Oleg came upon the remnants of something fascinating. He passed into a previously unexplored area of the forest and found signs of human activity. He first encountered a rusty barbed wire fence, and daring to go beyond, he came face to face with rusted trucks from the Soviet Union, abandoned in the middle of the forest. One of these trucks was even an ancient missile launcher. Well, not necessarily a launcher, but it was definitely an army vehicle used to transport ballistic missiles. It even had a launch mechanism in the center of its own console. None of the vehicles functioned any longer, and it looked as though they had been abandoned probably since the early 90s when the Soviet Union collapsed. But still, it's definitely one of the cooler things anyone has found during an ATV ride through the forest. Lamborghini Aventador Roadster it would be a dream come true to have a Lamborghini Aventador. In fact, just about anyone would be happy to have any kind of Lamborghini, even an old model without an engine sitting in their garage. These are some of the coolest vehicles in the world. That's what makes it so strange that a Lamborghini Aventador Roadster was found abandoned in Abu Dhabi sitting in a parking garage covered in dust and graffiti. Judging by just how much dust is collected on the Lamborghini, it has probably been abandoned for quite some time. But this is nothing new in the United Arab Emirates. The UAE is the land of supercars with some of the wealthiest people in the world sporting some of the most expensive cars in existence. It's no surprise that sometimes somebody can't pay the bill and they leave their Lamborghini sitting in a parking garage for someone else to deal with. It's sad, but it's true. But perhaps what's really sad is that the Lamborghini is not getting any action collecting dust. This is one car that really deserves to be driven. Abandoned Trolley Believe it or not, somebody tried to bring trolleys back to Brooklyn. It was a horribly failed experiment that ended in disaster, and now there is only one trolley left sitting on the Red Hook waterfront, tucked just out of sight behind the Beard Street warehouses. This decaying blue trolley was one of 17 decommissioned trolleys collected by two guys who started the Brooklyn Historic Railway Association. These are the two people who wanted to bring trolleys back to Brooklyn. However, the city put the kibosh on the plan before it could ever start. The rail tracks were removed, and then the road was paved over in 2004, erasing any hope of reinstating the trolleys. Most of the trolleys were then confiscated and deposited in an unknown location. The only one remaining is this blue trolley cart slowly rusting away on the waterfront. It's a 3303 Boston T Green Line car that dates back to 1951. Ukraine's Space Age Saucer 
In the country of Ukraine, there is a giant abandoned saucer. It's located in Kiev, on the outskirts of the country's capital. It's a hidden relic not known to many people that dates back to the days of the Soviet Union. Many years ago, it was considered the most innovative structure of its kind. It's not actually a flying saucer, but from above it definitely looks like something that would come from outer space, or something that would have been used as an alien aircraft in an episode of Star Trek. It was actually a bus garage, but it was built in the likeness of a flying saucer. The garage is currently abandoned, and the story behind it is actually pretty sad. The car garage opened in 1973 and was supposed to be an enormous car garage that would service all the city of Kiev. It took 80 years to build the garage, more than 180 steel cables to hold up the roof, and it was even used in April 1986 when 70 buses stationed underneath the giant saucer were drafted to evacuate the residents of Pripyat after the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. But like everything else in Eastern Europe, the end of the Soviet Union in 1991 proved to be disastrous. Asterisk. International routes were cancelled, Ukraine went into an economic crisis, and the lack of funds and necessity resulted in the terminal being largely abandoned along with many of its buses. But the station is still standing. You can even visit the dead flying saucer and its dozens of abandoned buses on any trip to Ukraine. Two-Wheel Gyro Car the story behind the Wolseley Shalovsky gyro car is absolutely insane. The vehicle was originally designed by a Russian count. The whole idea behind it was that it would be a normal car with only two wheels stabilized by a gyroscope in the center. Keep in mind, this was back in the early 1900s when motor vehicles were still in their baby phase. The vehicle ended up being built by Wolseley in the United Kingdom back in 1913. Surprisingly, the car actually worked. It was not able to navigate sharp turns, but it actually stayed upright thanks to the gyroscope. Like everything else on our list, though, this car just did not work out. The First World War was looming and people didn't have time to be developing wonky cars with wonky technology. It was all about military vehicles, so for whatever reason, the executives at Wolseley in London decided to dig a giant hole and throw the gyro car into it. That's definitely one weird way of abandoning a vehicle. Then in 1938, Morris Motors, who had purchased the original company that built the gyro car, decided to dig it out of the ground. However, the gyro car still did not last long. After it was dug out of the ground, the top brass at the company decided it was a silly endeavor and scrapped it for parts. The American Dream Limo the American Dream Limo epitomizes all the glory of wealth that a single person can handle. The American Dream Limousine was built by heavily modifying a 1970s Cadillac Eldorado to create the longest limousine ever. This vehicle was 100 feet 30 meters from bumper to bumper. There were 72 seats inside and more amenities than in most people's houses. It used two motors and actually had to be driven by a pair of drivers. There was one driver in the back and one driver in the front. The American Dream Limo was even able to host a helicopter on the back landing pad, which doubled as a hot tub. The car was completed in 1992 and was the pinnacle of extravagance. Unfortunately, the big issue with the car was that it could only be driven in a straight line. It could not turn even a little bit. The car was made to be detachable in the midsection so that it can break into two vehicles for easier parking at the end of a long and straight ride. It was eventually seen as completely redundant and entirely useless and was abandoned in a warehouse in New Jersey. It wasted away until 2014 when the American Dream Limo was sent to the AutoZeum Automotive Teaching Museum in New York to be used for teaching students how to fix broken cars. Which of these amazing vehicles would you love to restore and drive yourself? Goldzilla Everyone knows you're not supposed to release your pets into the wild, and you're definitely not supposed to throw your goldfish into a random pond. But just why not? First of all, goldfish typically don't last very long in the wild. If you flush them down the toilet, they usually die from the shock of the water. But if you release your goldfish into a pond in Kentucky, apparently it will turn into a monster. In Danville, Kentucky, a fisherman recently found a goldfish that weighed 20 pounds. It's unclear if the goldfish was at one point a pet, but it was clearly thriving in the pond. According to the fisherman who caught the goldfish, it was the biggest he ever saw. This is obviously incredible since most goldfish weigh less than one pound. Apparently goldfish are generally constrained in size by the tank they live in and the amount of food you feed them. If you let them loose in an environment with lots of space and abundant food, they may grow far larger than you ever imagined. However, the fish may not have been a goldfish after all. According to a biologist, it may have actually been a type of koi fish. Nonetheless, you still shouldn't throw your goldfish into a pond lest it turns into Goldzilla. Ferrets you should definitely never release your ferret into the wild. 
Even though these strange creatures are extremely popular pets, many people end up getting sick of them because they stink and can be kind of annoying depending on what kind of pet owner you are. But that does not mean you should just let it roam free. According to wildlife experts, pet ferrets rarely survive more than a few days in the wild. They simply do not have the instincts required to make a life outside on their own. And while there is a wild species of ferret known as the black-footed ferret, they are rare, endangered, and not domesticated. Ferrets have actually been bred for at least 2,500 years as domesticated animals, so they have no place in the wild, and unlike their relatives, which are wolverines and weasels, they simply will not last outside and will typically become a predator's meal within the week. Coyotes, birds of prey, or even large wildcats might try to eat your pet ferret if you let it out in the wild. Parrots Parrots are about as popular as ferrets, but these birds are ridiculously more annoying if you like peace and quiet. Parrots squawk and squawk, and all their squawking has led to people simply releasing them outside to get rid of them. And while some species have bred successfully in the wild, others are less fortunate and will probably perish very quickly. But in fact, escaped pet parrots are taking over the United States of America. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, a new study has found that at least 25 species of parrots not native to America are breeding in at least 23 states. So even though you shouldn't let your parrot fly out the window, depending on which state you live in, it may make some friends outside. There are at least 56 parrot species found across the US, and they're almost all because of pet birds either escaping or being released. And even though this may seem like a great thing, introducing a foreign species into an ecosystem is never a good idea. Even though they may be more colorful than gray pigeons that seem to live everywhere, they aren't a part of the ecosystem naturally, and so can disrupt the native animal populations with their presence. The lesson here is that you should not contribute to the growing parrot problem in the United States. Keep your windows closed. Have you ever owned an exotic pet? Tell me about it. Was it a parrot, or a snake, or a small mammal, or something else entirely? Or did you own a very rare breed of dog? Leave a comment with your story down below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already for more amazing videos just like this one. Exotic Pets This one should go without saying. Exotic pets should under no circumstance be released into the wild. Specifically tigers, lions, and other ferocious predators have no business wandering around on their own. There is no better example of exotic pets being released than the 2011 Zanesville disaster. It all started when Terry Thompson, the owner of the wildlife sanctuary, released all of his animals into the wild. But what happened next was an absolute massacre. Sheriffs arrived at the scene to find tigers, bears, and lions wandering off on their own, some of them headed for the highway, and others heading for town. Having no other choice, officers were forced to exterminate the wildlife using their pistols. According to a sheriff who had been part of the massacre, at times some officers were basically doing hand-to-hand -hand combat with the animals. During a single night of chaos, a lion killed a monkey, bears and lions were attacking local horses, and over 49 animals needed to be slaughtered, including 18 Bengal tigers, 17 lions, 3 mountain lions, 2 wolves, and even a baboon. It was truly sad to see all of these majestic wild animals be put down because they were released into the wrong environment by an irresponsible owner. The lesson here is that exotic animals have no business roaming around rural Ohio. Constrictor Snakes Perhaps one of the most released exotic pets is the boa constrictor. Many different types of constrictor snakes have become wildly popular since the beginning of the 2000s in the US. They're cheap to buy, you can pick them up at almost any pet store, and they're really cute when they're small. The problem is that constrictor snakes grow to be absolutely massive. Some of these snakes grow to be around 10 feet, 3 meters in length, and are extremely vicious. You should never release your constrictor snake into the wild for several different reasons. One of the reasons is that children, pets, and others are often attacked by random constrictor snakes. These creatures, when released, can do pretty much whatever they want. They will curl up in a stranger's garden, sneak into a random person's house and attack their baby, and other nefarious things. And it's not the snake's fault, it's just their nature. Since 1990, at least four babies and three other children have been squeezed to death by large constrictor snakes in the United States of America, according to the Humane Society. Some youngsters have even been attacked while playing in their backyards. You should by no means ever release one of these dangerous animals into the wild, as nine times out of ten, they will terrorize the public. Giant Lizards Oddly enough, there is now an invasive species of giant lizards crawling around the United States threatening native wildlife. This giant lizard is the Argentine black and white tegu, and it's a native of South America. 
Their main diet consists of the eggs laid by ground nesting birds. They can grow up to be about 4 feet 1.3 meters and weigh over 10 pounds. They are also wildly popular pets with weird people who want unique strange animals as their companions. But no matter how much these people claim to love their pets, sometimes these big lizards become too much to handle and people release them into the wild. Tegu lizards are indeed legal as pets, but letting them roam free is frowned upon. According to CNN, the Department of Natural Resources in Georgia is investigating what could be a population burst of these animals. If caught, tegus are typically euthanized as they do not belong in the United States. For this reason alone, you should never release your giant lizard into the wild. Alligators there are certainly some parts of the United States where you expect alligators to be roaming free. However, Michigan is not one of these places. But nonetheless, as of 2019, escaped pet alligators were on the loose and causing havoc in the state of Michigan. According to the Detroit Free Press, pet alligator escapes are actually on the rise. In July alone, at least six of the scaly creatures were spotted wandering free. They typically pop up in lakes, they skulk through people's yards, and they even crawl across the road. This is obviously not great considering alligators are not supposed to be living in Michigan. Because people don't expect them to be there, they aren't typically looking for them when going on a nice summer swim in the local river or lake. But here's the deal. Authorities estimate there are thousands of pet alligators all across Michigan, and when people get overwhelmed by their size or get bored of them, they simply let them out. And no, this is not a good idea. The last thing you want is your freed pet alligator getting enormous and eating your neighbor's baby. Cats. There is not much you can do that would be crueler than releasing your house cat into the wild. This happens a lot. People move, people get sick of smelling cat litter, or people just open up the door because they think their cat will have fun outside. But this is an absolutely horrific thing to do. Keep in mind that every domesticated cat has gotten used to eating food from a bowl and receiving treats in the morning. Letting your cat roam free is typically a death sentence. Your cat will probably be killed by actual feral cats who grew up on the streets. Some driver who isn't paying attention might run your cat over with their car, or the cat will simply die because it does not understand how to hunt. It's actually quite tragic, and rather than sending your precious kitty out into the wild to die, it's always suggested that you give it to a friend or at least take it to a shelter. Life in the wild for a house cat is not quite as much fun as you might assume it to be. Rabbits Releasing a pet rabbit into the wild is essentially the same as releasing a house cat into the wild. It's basically a death sentence. However, depending on where you live and what kind of predators are around, sometimes rabbits can thrive. If a rabbit encounters another rabbit and they like each other, chances are they're going to breed. And in some places throughout North America, released pet rabbits have resulted in massive population explosions and this permanently alters the normal wildlife balance. It can attract predators, it might destroy a small ecosystem, and sometimes there can be animal disease outbreaks caused by all the rabbits. Local authorities are usually called in to deal with the problem, and this leads to a massive extermination of the invasive rabbits. It's not a pleasant situation. Interestingly enough, when you release a pet rabbit into the wild, even though it has been domesticated, it will retain two of its core instincts. First, your pet rabbit will always dig a burrow so that it can hide and sleep. Your pet rabbit will also always behave like a prey species, instinctively avoiding any potential predator and any situation where it could be preyed upon. However, your pet rabbit has no experience running from predators and will probably be eaten by a fox or coyote or even a hawk. Cows it might seem like no big deal to simply release a herd of cows and let them roam free through the fields and wilderness. However, this is not a good idea. There's no better example of how dangerous it is to release domesticated cows into the wild than when animal rights activists released 71,000 cows in western Wisconsin back in 1998. It was done by a radical group called Animal Liberation Front, and they freed the cows from their human captors with disastrous consequences. One of the ALF members told local news that cows would finally be freed to run through the wilderness. But of course, within hours of the cows being released, police departments all throughout the area began receiving some very disturbing reports. Within just one night, 43 cows were hit by cars and 11 cows fell off of bridges and drowned. Plus, three cows were electrocuted by chewing on power lines. This is definitely a lot worse than standing around eating grass all day. The animal liberators actually loaded many of the cows into trucks and then drove 100 miles to free them in the clearing of a forest. But because they had no idea of the consequences of their actions, it ended in tragedy. In any case, don't let anyone's pet cow or domesticated farm animal out into the wild, lest you want it to fall off a bridge. Do you have an opinion on which animals should be let out into the wild? Or how we can better protect all animals, both wild and domesticated? Number 10. Giant Anaconda 
One of the most feared animals slithering around in the Amazon jungle is the giant anaconda. The giant anaconda is the apex predator of South America. It's a colossal reptile that grows, on average, to be around 28 feet, or 8.5 meters long. Throughout the 10 to 12 year span of their lives, anacondas never actually stop growing. The massive serpent's diet consists of turtles, black caimans, huge fish, deer, jaguars, and even humans if they feel so inclined. They eat around 40 pounds or 18 kilograms a day, or more like night as they are nocturnal hunters. And while an average anaconda is freaky enough as it is, a recent story reported in The Sun will make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. The story claims that workers from a construction site in Brazil discovered an anaconda that measured an incredible length of 33 feet, or 10 meters, and weighed an astonishing 882 pounds, about 400 kilograms. This is obviously insane, but if true, it would be one of the biggest snakes ever discovered on the planet. The anaconda was allegedly found by workers after they did a controlled explosion of a cave while building a new dam. It has led people to wonder just what kind of monstrosities are living deep within the cave systems of the Amazon jungle. Is the giant anaconda the only crazy monster living inside these caves? Or could there be more ferocious unknown beasts lurking in the dark and clammy passages under the forest floor? Number 9. Pink Dolphin Perhaps not the craziest animal in the Amazon, but certainly one of the most exceptional. The Pink River Dolphin lives primarily in the Orinoco River Basin of Bolivia and Colombia. They are spectacular and definitely stand or swim apart from other species of dolphin. Although the majestic Amazon pink dolphins are famous for their pink hue, they were not born this way. They are actually born gray and gradually turn pink as they age. Their final color can be influenced by their behavior, diet, exposure to sunlight, and capillary placement. They can be found anywhere from mostly gray with only a few pink spots to a wonderful flamingo pink. And when the dolphins get excited, they can flush a brighter pink, similar to humans blushing. Another amazing fact about Amazon River Dolphins is that they come with a melon. Every Amazon River Dolphin has a large melon that is kind of like a glob of tissue found in their forehead. The melon is an organ that the dolphins use as a biosonar instrument. The organ is exceptionally mysterious. Scientists aren't completely sure how it works, but they believe that it somehow allows the dolphins to utilize echolocation by focusing sound. It also helps to modulate the vocalization of the dolphin. Some scientists believe the melon is the way that dolphins are able to communicate with one another. The pink dolphins also have the largest brains of freshwater dolphins, and researchers believe that they are also the smartest of the five species. What's your favorite animal from the Amazon? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number eight, the Jesus lizard. Have you ever heard of the Jesus lizard before? This funny looking reptile is famous for its uncanny ability to run across water. It's actually known as a green basilisk and it's part of the iguana family, but it earned the name Jesus lizard for the way it skims the water surface as if by miracle. But it's not actually a miracle. The long toes on the lizard's feet allow it to rip across the surface of any body of water at a speed of roughly five feet per second. This is one of the most incredible abilities of any animal on the planet. Not only is it super fast, but it also evolved special traits that let it walk on water. The two foot or 0.6 meter Jesus lizard can remain under the water for up to 30 minutes and they can climb, they can swim, they can run, and they have very strong teeth fused to the inside parts of their jaws. The Jesus lizard is, without a doubt, the most charismatic reptile living in the Amazon jungle today. Unfortunately, they are also endangered and very easily eaten by large birds. Number seven, Amazon ghost dogs. A lot of people don't know that there are wild dogs living in the Amazon jungle. But it's true. 
there is a solitary species, often referred to as ghost dogs, that are so elusive, almost nobody has seen them with their eyes. They are typically only captured using remote cameras. The dogs have short ears and look more like weasels than canines, but they actually roam across five countries, all throughout the South American jungles. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, they live primarily in Brazil and Peru, and tragically, most of their habitat is going to be lost by the year 2027 due to deforestation. This species of dog is the least studied across the world, at least according to an ecologist from the University of California. These dogs are different from other wild canines because they don't live in packs. Most scientists believe the creatures live alone and are extremely shy, hiding in swampy forests. They have almost no interaction with humans. And even more interesting is that they're not even part of the same genus as domestic dogs or wolves. They have their own genus. That's how unique these wild dogs are. It's unlikely you'll ever see one. Number six, the decoy spider. The decoy spider is one of the freakiest spiders with one of the most unusual abilities known to man. It's a relatively new spider only recently discovered in the 21st century. But what the decoy spider does as a defense mechanism has shocked and boggled scientists ever since its original discovery. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, these spiders live deep in the Peruvian Amazon jungle, and they use their webs to create fake decoys of themselves. When building a web, the spider will literally craft a doppelganger out of scrap pieces of dead insects, leaves, and other debris. The spider then leaves its sly decoy in the middle of its web to trick any potential predators that might want to eat it for a snack. The spider even sometimes uses the broken legs and abdomens of other spiders to create its masterpiece of mimicry. This is a massively complex survival strategy that shows just how crafty and intelligent even a small and seemingly insignificant life form can be. It turns out, spiders are smarter than we thought. Number five, the Holtzin. Let's take a look at a flying creature residing in the canopies of the Amazon. As the most biologically diverse place on the planet, it should come as no surprise that the Amazon boasts the most impressive and crazy display of birds in the world. One of the strangest is the Holtzin. The Holtzin is a bird about the size of a chicken but it doesn't resemble a chicken at all. It has a blue face, an orange mohawk crest, and some other characteristics that make it unlike any other avian creature around. First, the Hudson is kind of like a flying cow. It is the only bird in the world that uses a foregut compartment rather than a stomach to digest food. Kind of like how a cow uses a special sack inside of its gut to digest its food. The evolution of this bird has, quite frankly, made many scientists scratch their heads in disbelief. And one other thing. The Hudson is sometimes known as the stink bird. This is because the bacteria in its foregut that helps to break down its food also causes vapor to be exhaled by the bird. And the vapor smells horrifying. Basically, it burps up foul vapor. The bird smells so terrible that scientists have nicknamed it the stink bird. Hudson like to build their nest on branches that hang over the water, and they lay about two to three eggs at a time. If a predator approaches the nest, the chicks will drop into the water below and hide in the banks till the beast of prey moves on. They are surprisingly good swimmers. Number four, yellow-tailed woolly monkey. The yellow-tailed woolly monkey is by far one of the silliest monkeys found swinging through the Amazon jungle. But what makes these monkeys so fascinating is their climbing abilities. They look like they're flying through the forest rather than swinging from branch to branch. They typically live in the middle area of the trees and can jump around 50 feet or 15 meters through the air. They primarily live in Peru and they have large bodies with thick coats of fur, hence why they're called woolly monkeys. They spend most of their days resting and eating, with 2% of their time spent grooming and playing with their friends. These monkeys are absolutely fantastic creatures. Unlike most monkeys, they don't engage in a lot of aggressive behavior. 
and sometimes adult males will fight, but other than that, they are exceptionally peaceful. The monkeys are also quite vocal. They have been known to emit sharp howls when a threat is nearby, particularly when they sense humans in the area. If you ever find yourself walking through the forests of Peru and hear what sounds like dogs barking in the trees, you're probably hearing a group of yellow-tailed woolly monkeys screaming at you to go away. Number three, the Patu bird. Today, we're looking at the craziest animals from the Amazon, and there's no creature better to start off the list than the Patu bird. There are several different types of Patu bird, all of which are equally slightly kooky. They're one of the strangest birds you will ever come across in the Amazon rainforest. If you do, that is. Patu birds are masters of disguise, as they are colored very similarly to the trees scattered around the forest. Its brownish feathers make it blend in perfectly with any tree it decides to land on, making it look more like a stubby branch than an exotic bird. You are more likely to see one of these feathered creatures on nights when the moon is full and lighting up the jungle rather than a normal dark night in the dense bush. If you don't see one, I'm sure you'll hear one. These birds have some of the most distinct and unusual calls of any bird in the entire Amazon jungle. They almost sound like ghosts screeching or wailing in the distance. Some people have described the call of the Patu bird as an anguished whistle that chases men through the forest. According to the local legends of the Amazon, the call of the Patu bird is actually the mournful lament of an ancient spirit, crying its love for a distant spirit who lives on the moon. It's a weird story, but that's the truth behind the Patu bird. Number two, spectacled bear. When people think about bears, they typically think about the bears that live in North America, such as the black bear or the grizzly bear. But there's actually a species of bear that roams across the Amazon jungle. It's known as the spectacled bear, and it is an incredibly fascinating beast. According to the Rainforest Alliance, there are even Amazonian legends that say that these spectacled bears have mystical powers. But of course, these powers have never been scientifically recorded. The spectacled bear has a strange circle of cream-colored fur around its eyes, and that makes it appear as though it's wearing glasses. The bear has specialized claws that it uses for climbing trees, and it can live for about 25 years in the wild. They live all throughout Latin America, but prefer the densely forested areas. And like most bears, they primarily eat fruits and other natural foods. They spend most of their days up in the trees, collecting fruit, and sometimes even build their own tree houses out of broken branches so that they can reach their favorite treats on the higher branches. These are really some of the most amazing bears in the entire world, and unfortunately, they are at risk of extinction because of habitat loss. Number 1. Bulldog Bats Last but not least is a remarkable species of bat. People are pretty divided on their feelings about bats. This is especially true nowadays when it feels like bats are spreading their yucky diseases all across the human population. But, putting aside disease, the bulldog bat from the Amazon rainforest is a very special animal. It's one of the only bats in the world that has evolved specifically to become a fisherman. The greater bulldog bat will fly low over the water and pluck fish out of ponds and rivers with its little claws. But not only does this crazy bat like to catch fish, it will also eat frogs and other crustaceans. It uses echolocation to detect ripples on the surface of the water created by fish and other aquatic creatures moving around. The bat then uses its incredible speed to swoop down and catch itself some dinner. How amazing are these animals? What do you think about the secret Amazonian dogs? Abandoned ship on a rock. Here in one of the strangest locations for an abandoned ship imaginable is a strange abandoned ship sitting on a pile of rocks with a forest growing out of its hull. 
While it may be a little less dramatic than a pirate ship stuck on a small island, it's still pretty incredible and it's 100% real. The ship was apparently built in 1917, back during World War I. It carried petroleum products for the company's standard oil, and like other ships at the time, it was eventually used as a cannery up in Alaska. But then in 1966, the ship was scuttled. It now sits completely overgrown on a pile of rocks near Anacortes in Washington State. This ship was actually listed on the National Register of Historic Places back in 1990. You can see the ship from the road as you drive past. However, why exactly the ship is where it is today has proved to be a bit of a mystery. It seems that rather than properly dismantling the boat, it was simply left to rot until it became a historic place all on its own. This is totally against the proper guides for decommissioning a boat, but it seems that whoever was operating it didn't seem to care a lot. Why not scrap it and sell the scrap metal at least? Some things will remain a mystery. Ship on the Highway If you happen to find yourself in the Canadian province of Ontario, you might be lucky enough to spot a gigantic abandoned ship on the highway going from Toronto to Niagara Falls. The ship isn't actually on the highway, it's sitting in the shallow water beside the road. But it's still a pretty odd thing to see, especially if you weren't expecting it. The ship is actually known as the Big Weasel, and it's a replica of the sailing vessel used by the famous explorer Jacques Cartier from the 1500s. The original ship never survived, and neither did the first replica from the 1967 Expo in Montreal. The version you now see abandoned next to the highway in Ontario is actually the second replica made. It was crafted by a businessman with hopes that it would become a floating eatery or casino, but the business failed and the ship was abandoned. In 2003, a mysterious arson destroyed most of the ship. Maybe the owner trying to get some insurance money, and what you see today is what happens when you mix history and bad ideas. It's unclear if the owner will ever take the ship away or if the government of Ontario will just let it slowly sink into the water. Have you ever seen an abandoned ship yourself? Where was it? Did you have to go diving or was it left above the water? Did you explore it or leave it alone? Tell me about your experience exploring abandoned ships by leaving a comment down below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you haven't already. There are lots of amazing videos just like this one coming out every day. Blackbeard Abandoned His Boat Believe it or not, the infamous pirate Blackbeard may not have been as clever as he's depicted in the movies. Indeed, he was one of the most feared pirates in the Americas, robbing and pillaging where he felt like, but his reign of terror didn't last very long. It's been common knowledge for many years that Blackbeard ran his ship aground in North Carolina back in 1718, but new evidence suggests he may have abandoned his ship on purpose. I'm of course talking about the Queen Anne's Revenge, the flagship vessel of Blackbeard. It was the crown jewel of his pirate fleet. According to historical records, the ship was stranded in 1718 after Blackbeard collected a substantial ransom for lifting his blockade of the port at Charlestown. The ship ended up being abandoned when it struck a sandbar, and it then sank and is still sunken to this very day. For such a fearsome pirate, abandoning his precious craft must have been a big deal. What happened, and why? Up until now, historians figured Blackbeard simply misjudged the depth of the sandbar, causing the ship to get stuck, but it turns out that might not be the case. A recent analysis of the ship's hull revealed that the ship was in awful condition when it ran aground. In fact, it was likely already beyond repair. It was probably leaking water and could not be patched with simple tar and a few planks of lumber. Rather than take it into a pirate ship service center, Blackbeard likely abandoned the ship and took off without it. It was the pirate equivalent of abandoning your worthless car on the side of the highway. It makes a lot of sense, too. The same way a criminal might abandon their getaway car right after they peel away from the scene of a crime in order to disguise their tracks, Blackbeard must have felt pretty smart about escaping from his iconic and recognizable pirate ship to continue pillaging freely. Bermuda Ghost Ship Ships are abandoned all the time. Just recently, an abandoned cargo ship washed up on the coast of Ireland seemingly from nowhere. According to the report from the BBC, the vessel drifted thousands of miles over more than a year from somewhere south of Bermuda all the way to the shores of Ireland. In September of 2018, the United States Coast Guard had rescued the crew members of the boat, which had been crafted in 1976. The vessel had encountered problems while sailing from Greece to Haiti, and a power outage caused the boat to drift at sea for 20 days before the Coast Guard became aware of it. The Coast Guard then rescued the crew as a hurricane 
approached, and afterwards the ship was just kind of left to its own devices. It was spotted a few times since 2018, randomly bobbing through the Atlantic Ocean, and now it's washed up on shore for the curious public to take photos of. However, whether the boat will stay on the shore or if the tide will wash it back out to continue its mysterious and ghostly journey across the seven seas is yet to be determined. What does not make any sense, though, is why no one has captured the ship and begun disassembling it for scrap metal. They could even refurbish it, and it would be worth a lot of money. The whole situation is awfully strange, to be honest. Abandoned Renaissance Town with Pirate Ship Everyone wants to hear about pirate ships, ancient relics, and the possibility of buried treasure, right? This place has it all. A creaking pirate ship is sitting abandoned in Sherwood Forest, Virginia, but not just a pirate ship. There's a crumbling stone castle, a rotting two-door mansion, and all kinds of eerie sights from the Renaissance era. In fact, it's an entire theme park based on the Renaissance that opened to the public in the 1990s and then closed three years later and was subsequently abandoned. While the pirate ship obviously wasn't used for any piracy, it's still a pretty shocking thing to see sitting on the bank of a river in the middle of a Virginia forest. Everything in the park is crumbling into dust, and the pirate ship is essentially a death trap. It seems like the whole place might be haunted, or it could be filled with unfriendly wildlife. The whole situation is totally bizarre. Why hasn't the park been refurbished or turned into something new? It's a perfect place for daredevils and thrill-seekers to go for an adventure. While definitely a mysterious place to explore, I don't recommend trying to board this particular vessel. Rotting Cruise Ships Pirate ships and cargo ships are not the only types of ships to be abandoned. Try saying that three times fast. In 2020, many cruise ships ended up being abandoned because of the coronavirus pandemic. As you can imagine, maintaining a cruise ship is ridiculously expensive, especially when there are no customers on it. The result has been shipyards permanently closed and cruise ships being forgotten and dismantled all over the globe. For example, the cruise company Carnival lost at least $2.9 billion according to the New York Times, and they have abandoned 18 of their ships already. The big mystery here is what the future of cruise ships will look like, whether anyone will ever board a cruise ship again, and what will happen to the thousands of unused ships all around the world. It might be a great time to pick yourself up a cheap cruise ship all for yourself. I wonder what it would cost to create your own floating party palace, even if you just anchor it in port and charge people to come aboard for dinner and drinks. You could also play a really amazing game of hide and seek on one of these abandoned hulks. We also might see a lot of these vessels washed up on random beaches around the world. The Lady Lovabond Ghost Ship Perhaps the most mysterious boat ever to sail the seven seas is the Lady Lovabond. This ship sailed back in the days when sailors believed it was horrendously bad luck for a woman to be on a board of a ship when it was out at sea. And in this case, it really was. Back in 1748, the Lady Lovabond left port from England en route to Portugal. The captain brought with him his new wife. So far as the legend goes, one of the men aboard the ship was jealous of the captain and his wife, and so he took control of the ship and steered it directly into an area known as the Goodwin Sands, essentially sacrificing the entire vessel and killing everyone on it. But here's where the story gets interesting. Exactly 50 years to the day after the ship was destroyed, the captain of the ship Edenbridge recorded in his log that he nearly collided with a schooner that looked identical to the Lady Lovabond. Another 50 years and the same thing happened again on February 13th. This recurrence went on until 1948, leading people to believe that every 50 years the mysterious ghost ship appears in the same place. People even went out to the area of Goodwin Sands in 1998 on February 13th to try and catch a glimpse of it, but the ship never showed. Now we have to wait until 2048. Fire Island Shipwreck The Bessie White was a Canadian schooner that ran aground on Fire Island. This happened either in 1919 or 1922, as the historical records are a bit confusing. But the boat definitely ran aground, filled with water, and ended up a complete loss. The crew survived, but the cargo was lost, and the ship was eventually salvaged. Most of the wreck was taken apart, and the few pieces remaining washed out to sea. Now, keep in mind, this was in the early 1900s. Then in 2012, the hull of a mysterious ship was found beached on Fire Island. The hull was rotted and old, and it definitely did not come from any modern vessel. Experts believe it's the mysterious remains of the Bessie White. Though the real mystery is whether the hull had been on the beach the whole time, or if it floated around the world and came back to land in the exact same spot. Sugarboat Shipwreck 
For 40 years, there has been an overturned hulk of a ship sitting in the middle of the River Clyde in Scotland. It's known as the Sugarboat Shipwreck and it was destroyed during a storm back in 1974. While the storm was not overly mysterious, the fact that the boat has remained sideways and abandoned in the middle of the river is nothing short of a miracle. There have been plans over the years to blow it out of the water, but it's never happened. And nobody has bothered trying to salvage it because there have been disputes over who even owns the boat, so it's probably going to sit in the water sideways as a strange and mysterious eyesore for the next 40 years. I wonder what kinds of animals have made this rotting piece of metal into their underwater home. The MV Joyita the MV Joyita is the most mysterious abandoned ship ever. It was a merchant vessel that went missing in October of 1955. The ship was in pretty rough condition when it set out, but that does not account for what happened. You see, after the ship went missing, it was discovered five weeks later adrift with not a single person on board. The crew appeared to have abandoned the vessel and then vanished into thin air. The boat was in no danger of sinking, so it's highly unlikely that the crew had abandoned the ship and in any case, there was no sign that they had packed up and gone. But to make things even more mysterious, there were four tons of cargo missing, and the radio was turned to the International Marine Radio Telephone Distress Channel. To this day, nobody knows what happened to the crew or why they abandoned the MV Joyita. Bali's Abandoned Plane some abandoned places are a little more obscure than others. Take the abandoned plane in Bali, for example. Nobody knows about this place, and yet it is very cool. There is an abandoned Boeing 737 sitting in the southern part of Bali, and nobody knows how it got there. It's about five minutes from the popular Pandawa Beach, and yet it's something of a secret that mostly only locals know about. The plane appears to have landed properly with no sign of a crash or some kind of catastrophic failure. It obviously missed the airport and decided to touch down near the jungle instead, but it's really crazy crazy that nobody noticed a Boeing 737 touching down. And as for the people who left it there, nobody knows where they went. Someone would have had to land the plane, get out, and then find their way to civilization. According to some locals, the plane was supposed to be converted into a restaurant for tourists, but this is just a rumor. Nobody knows if the owner of the plane ran out of money, if they just ran out of gas and had no choice but to land, or exactly what happened. The aircraft is now surrounded by a few shipping containers and a particularly shabby hut. For those in the know, it's a great day trip to get away from the beach. It's easy enough to explore and just 5 miles 8 kilometers north is yet another abandoned 737 sitting next to a Dunkin' Donuts. It seems that Bali is basically a graveyard for random airplanes that nobody knows about. Discovery Island one of the strangest abandoned places that nobody knows about is Discovery Island. What's really crazy is that this abandoned island is located in the center of Disney World in Florida. Thousands of visitors hang out at Disney World every day and have no idea that there is an abandoned island with a horrifying past just beyond their favorite rides. But just what is going on with this island? It's located in Bay Lake, and it's a huge landmass that can only be reached by boat. Before Disney purchased the land, it had been used as a hunting retreat. Before it was Discovery Island, it opened in 1974 as Treasure Island. There was a shipwreck, treasures, and other pirate-themed nonsense. But in 1976, the island was renamed Disney's Discovery Island. Disney turned it into a tropical paradise with interesting plants and beautiful birds. But this turned out to be a huge disaster. The park was abandoned and forgotten in 1998 after 25 years of operation, and it happened after a pretty grim scandal. It turned out that some of the employees at Discovery Island were up to no good. There were reports of widespread animal abuse, including employees smashing the eggs of birds, hitting birds with sticks, and even shooting at them with guns. It was an absolutely horrifying place, and according to a 1990 report from the Orlando Sentinel, Walt Disney World had to pay a massive fine to settle 16 animal cruelty charges held against them and five of their employees. Darby Island and the Haunted Castle the Bahamas is supposed to be a beautiful and relaxing place where you can take your family on a quiet vacation. But nobody knows there is a private island in the Bahamas purported to be haunted. The island also has a secret Nazi castle abandoned in the middle of its lush forest. The castle is known as Darby Castle, and it was apparently built as a working plantation back in 1938. During World War II, the plantation was the largest employer in the southern Bahamas. The workers produced palm oil, fruit, and they even worked with goats. And even though the castle is now in ruins, the legend of its horror persist. Some claim that the Englishman who lived in the castle was a Nazi sympathizer. Some even say the ghosts of the Englishman and his mistress have never wanted to leave the island and are still there today. The island has 554 acres of land completely abandoned and not lived in. When exactly the island was left unattended is still something of a mystery. 
Even more interesting is that the Unknown Island has some pretty wealthy neighbors. It's been reported that Nicolas Cage, Johnny Depp, and even David Copperfield each own their own private island residences near Darby Island and its abandoned Nazi castle. Have you ever discovered an unknown or unique abandoned place while exploring? Tell me about your discovery, post about how you found it, and what was there in the comments below. Then remember to subscribe to Taltanic if you have not already for more awesome and fun videos just like this one. Ordos. There are some pretty fabulous places in China. All things considered, it is home to some pretty incredible monuments, a rich and interesting history, and the most revolutionary architecture on the planet. It's also home to many ghost cities, including this one. Ordos is being called the world's largest ghost town. According to Business Insider, the local government threw a ton of money at an urban development project in the early 2000s after a coal mining boom. They had hoped to create a massive epicenter for culture, economy, and politics. This place was named Ordos Newtown. It would be able to hold one million people, and it was created with the most advanced sports venues, incredible architectural projects, and massive residential towers. Unfortunately, nobody settled in the city. In 2016, there were only 100,000 people living there. That's just one-tenth of its space being filled. A visit to this strange city feels like arriving at a post-apocalyptic space station. The architecture is amazing and highly advanced, the city is huge, and yet there is nobody living there. There are empty streets, huge residential towers without a single person living in them, and luxury homes still new without a single resident. Even more incredible is the Art and City Museum that does not have any visitors. There's a huge stadium with no games being played, there are also abandoned villas and empty schools. It's the most low-key ghost town in the world, and nobody knows about it. SS City of Adelaide Australia is home to the coolest animals in the world. Most of the country is also a barren wasteland. Off the shores of Australia, there is one of the strangest sights you will ever see, and because of its total isolation, nobody even knows it's there. I'm talking about the SS City of Adelaide, which launched back in 1863 from Glasgow en route to Sydney. It operated for 30 years as a passenger ship before being transformed into a vessel for sailing. But then in 1912, the ship caught on fire. It burned for several days before anyone managed to extinguish the flames. It was then purchased by a rich resident of Australia who wanted to use it for his own personal business. While the ship was being towed to its destination, it ran aground in Cockle Bay. It was then abandoned. All these years later, the SS city of Adelaide is still sitting in the bay in ruins and overgrown with trees. There is a literal forest growing out of this half-sunken boat. It's been completely reclaimed by nature, and there are no plans to scrap it anytime soon soon. In fact, the ship is located in a remote region of an Australian marine park, which means it has special protection. There are no commercial fishermen allowed in the area because they could disturb the SS city of Adelaide and its peaceful ecosystem. Shade Swamp Sanctuary the Shade Swamp Sanctuary is one of the freakiest unknown places in Connecticut. It's a zoo from the era of the Great Depression, located just off the highway, completely abandoned, broken down into an ugly ruin, and pretty much nobody knows it's there. You can find the zoo off Route 6 in Connecticut, and people drive by it every day without knowing its story or what even it is. But here's the scoop. The zoo was once part of a massive preserve known as Shade Swamp Sanctuary. It began as a wildlife rehabilitation operation in the 1930s where injured animals were rehabilitated and then released into the wild. These were birds, bears, and all kinds of other crazy animals. There was also a breeding program for raccoons and rabbits because people hunted them so much during the Great Depression because they had no food to eat. But then came the issue. People began to hear about the zoo, and so they would bring in the exotic pets that they didn't want anymore, such as monkeys and giraffes. It became too much for the zoo to handle. They didn't have enough funding, and by the 1960s, it was completely abandoned and left to rot. It's unclear what happened to all the animals, but it probably was not anything good. What's really interesting is that the whole area is now protected and on the National Register of Historic Places, but only because of a wooden shelter constructed in the sanctuary back in 1934 by members of the Civilian Conservation Corps. It's because of this artifact that Shade Swamp Sanctuary cannot be destroyed. The National Capitol Columns The Capitol Columns are one of the lesser-known historical sites in Washington, D.C. These sandstone columns supported the East Portico of the United States Capitol way back in the early 1800s, but in 1958 they were replaced with new marble columns. The United States government wasn't sure what to do with the originals, so they put them in storage until 1984. Then they decided to put them on display at the National Arboretum, but it turned out that nobody cared about the old columns. Even though they had been used as part of extremely important inaugurations between 1828 and 1958, such as Andrew Jackson and Abraham Lincoln, they are currently abandoned in an open field and nobody goes to visit them. Nobody even knows they're there. The Rutland Prison Camp 
The Rutland Prison Camp is another unknown abandoned place that deserves way more attention. It's buried deep in the forest of western Massachusetts, and some people even say the ruins of the old Rutland Prison Camp are haunted. The camp was apparently used in the 1800s and the early 1900s as a prison that housed minor offenders and those who had committed nonviolent crimes. In those days, that meant people who were charged with public intoxication or avoiding taxation. The inmates were forced to do farm work and they lived in minimum security lodgings. But as the years went by, the camp grew and grew, more and more prisoners were sent to it, and it was abandoned out of nowhere in 1934 because of a massive complication with the water supply. It seemed that the prison camp could not sustain a large population, and it was abruptly forgotten. This was actually a huge issue in the 1900s, as jails, hospitals, and asylums all began to see massive waves of overcrowding. The ruins can still be seen in the forest if you know where to look, and it's a pretty ghostly sight. If not for the layers of bright and annoying graffiti sprayed all over the stone, it would definitely be a lot creepier. The Rodney Ghost Town Speaking of creepy, the Rodney ghost town in Mississippi is certainly the most disturbing place in recent memory. It's also extremely difficult to find and almost nobody knows it's there. The only way to find Rodney is to locate the old country store on Highway 61. From the store, you have to turn down a road that does not even look like a road. You will pass by the Cane Ridge Cemetery, so you know you're getting into seriously creepy territory. Then the road stops after about 12 miles, 20 kilometers. From there, you will find yourself in the middle of the city of Rodney. It had once been a bustling town on the Mississippi River, but today nobody lives there. It is a horrifying sight to behold and not somewhere you want to spend the night. The town also has a pretty disturbing history. Rodney was incorporated in 1828, according to Mississippi Folklife, and had about 20 buildings stretching away from the river. The town grew to hold about 200 residents, a few stores, and even the first opera house in the state of Mississippi. But in 1843, the town was struck by an epidemic of yellow fever. Then it happened again in 1847. So many people died, the town became depopulated. Residents were forced to flee because of fear of disease, which many of them suspected came from New Orleans. But despite all the death and pestilence, Rodney still became an extremely busy port on the Mississippi River after the 1850s. There was another population boom, which resulted in at least 4,000 residents by 1860. The town was even more popular than Jackson. But as with a lot of things in the South, the Civil War spelled disaster. Many people moved out of the region, many of those who had gotten rich off the backs of slaves were forced to change their way of life, and by 1930, Rodney was no longer an official town. The river flooded, the structures diminished, and the town gradually died. But it still survived quite a while. It was not until 2011 that every last resident was gone and Rodney turned into an official ghost town. Flying Saucer Homes A lot of people don't know that there are flying saucer homes from the 1960s spread across the globe. These are known as the Futuro Houses, and they are in essence the last remaining physical manifestations of the optimism felt in the 1960s. They look exactly like flying saucers and were prefabricated vacation homes built to easily adapt to just about any terrain. You could put them on the side of a mountain or on a beach but the remaining flying saucer homes from the 60s are now spread across the globe. Almost all of them are abandoned, and they can be seen from the beaches of Australia to the snowy tundra of Russia. It's unclear how these weird spaceship houses got distributed so far across the planet, but it's believed that there are at least a dozen of them still decaying throughout the world. One of them is abandoned in Royce City, Texas. Another can be found near Frisco in North Carolina. And if you dig deep enough, you could travel most of the world searching for the rest of these abandoned UFOs. What do you think? Are you up for it? Would you visit any of these mysterious locations? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and be sure to come back soon for more amazing content right here on Taltanic.